Hey there, it's Ben Hassel here, and here in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at the Block Party 3D Transitions for Final Cut Pro 10. Now, I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for working with transitions in general, but also we're going to be having a look in detail at how we work with the Block Party Transitions, the different settings that we've got, and also some of the 50 different presets that you get uh, for creating these 3D transitions in Final Cut Pro 10. So, you'll get a lot from this tutorial um, about the Block Party Transitions and also um, how to work with transitions in general. Um, and if you like these kinds of tutorial reviews, um, or kind of pure tutorials for Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. Um, and if you have any questions, then please do leave them in the comments below. But without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at the Block Party Transitions Pack from FX Factory. So here in Final Cut Pro, I've thrown a few of the block party transitions onto the timeline between these clips. Um, and we're gonna run through a couple of the presets and then have a look at some of the settings that we can work with in the plugin uh, to kind of refine our transition edits and also to kind of get the effects that we want. So we look at how to change things like the number of blocks that we have uh, in our transition, uh, the color of the background, and also um, how we can think about creating some very cool transitions in Final Cut Pro. So I've created a completely blank timeline here, and we're gonna begin just with a couple of clips just to get started with things. So I'm first of all gonna drag a few clips down into my timeline. So we'll grab this aerial shot of this junction. We'll grab this drone shot of the ocean, and we'll grab this shot of a city here. So basically, um, the first thing I always kind of do normally when I'm adding transitions is make sure that I've got enough media at the end of my clips um, to add a transition. So if we go to a basic transition like a cross dissolve, it behaves in exactly the same way as something like the block party transitions where when we drag it on, if we don't have any media there, we're gonna get this message uh, that will pop up asking us if we wanna ripple trim or shorten our clips basically so that we can create that transition. So I'm gonna click cancel there and I wanna control this manually. So I'm gonna shorten my clip from the end and you can see that media limit when we drag out to the end here using the selection tool. We basically reach the media limit. So we need to have a bit of overlap between our two clips before we can add a transition. So I'm just gonna shorten these up. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And at the moment, if I look, my clip is seven seconds long here, so I'm going to shorten it down by a couple of seconds either side. We'll shorten this one down a bit more so they're all roughly the same length. So we'll just drag these down and kind of eyeball them to around the same length. So I've got a four second clip, a three second clip, and a three second and 24 frame clip. So if we come to the block party transitions, so you'll Find these once you've installed them across in your transitions browser on the right. If you don't see your transitions, then just bring them up by clicking this button. And basically once we're in there, we can come to block party. And we see two things here really. One is the block party transition in its original format. And then we see the different kind of presets for that block party transition. So we have 50 different uh, kind of options here um, for these different kind of block party uh, transitions um, and we're just going to kind of play around with a couple of them and then look at some ideas for how we can mix the block party transition um, with something like a split screen um, in Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm going to grab this celestial transition and drag it onto my edit here and you can see now I can play it through and it plays super quickly. So for all the 3D and everything in there and we're getting an extremely quick playback of that transition. And what you'll notice when you have it highlighted is if you come up to your inspector on the top right, and if you don't see your inspector, just hit this little blue button, that will bring your inspector up. And for the transition, we don't just have the basic options here that we get with a lot of the other transitions. We have a whole series of different tabs for rotation um, that we can change, uh, for the wobble of a transition, um, for the effects that we can apply, um, such as the light rays. And then also for things like uh, field of view and depth blur that we can apply and slow motion that we can apply to kind of really get a lot of nice control over our transition. So if we show this, you can see we've got a transparent fill color. We'll hide that. And basically in all these settings, uh, kind of when we have a look at some of these clips that have been applied, you'll notice they've all basically been modified uh, from the same block party original transition that we can see here. So if we drag this on, um, all these transitions are basically built um, from this same uh, transition. If I slow it down, we'll see it a bit better. So really nice and super smooth in its original format as well. So a couple of the ones that I really like uh, in the block party transition um, are the 
matrix referencing wake up neo uh, transition so if we drag this on here you can see we'll just slow this down so there's a couple of different uh things here as i'm stretching out my transition that are worth mentioning so we can slow this down so that we can see the transition a bit better but also if you look at your kind of transition block here you've got the option here to lengthen and shorten your transition and um, we can move the transition in the middle here so we can roll that edit point between those two clips. So this other option here with the two little lines allows us to lengthen the clips either side of that transition. So basically, if we drag out here um, and we've reached the media limit here, I think, for this clip, so we can't drag out any further, but basically we can shorten and lengthen the clips um, on either side there. So there's a lot of nice control in your transitions. We can also, if we highlight the transition and hold down Control and tap D, um, we can type in a duration that we want for the transition. So if we want this to happen over one and a half seconds, we would type in one period one five and hit enter. And that will shorten our transition to exactly one and a half seconds um, in our timeline. So we've got a nice level of control over those transitions. We can also do that for multiple transitions as well. So if I highlight all these transitions and do control and D and type in one period, it will make each of those transitions one second long. If you don't have the media available, then it won't lengthen them to the, the length that you want. So for instance, if I do Control and D here and try and lengthen these all to four seconds, so four period, then you can see that some of them just aren't gonna be able to fit uh, into that space. So I've got one transition that's two seconds, one transition that is four seconds, so that one worked, and then this transition um, is 2.28 seconds because of the media limit uh, there. So I'm going to do Command and Z just to step back. So we've got a nice level of control over kind of selecting our transitions um, in here as well. So um, if we have a look at this transition, I'm going to come to the middle so I can kind of see it halfway through. If we come up um, to our options here, you can see we've got some real nice options for changing. So I can increase the number of rows. I can decrease the number of columns or increase them so I can have a kind of blockier uh, transition. I can change the angle, okay? So I can add some angle in some different ways to the way that transition is falling. And I can also um, change the face that is being revealed. So it could be the next face or the back face. So you can see when I change that, we get a slightly different effect there um, as we're moving from one clip to the next. So I'm going to stretch this out as much as I can just so we can play it through more slowly. And we'll keep that selected, come back to the midpoint here so we can see it uh, kind of halfway between both those clips. We've also got the options for the, the side color here as well. So if we click there, we can change the, the kind of side color um, of our blocks. Um, and that will vary in how much it actually changes um, depending on uh, some of the effects that you have available here. So you can see I've got this glow on at the moment, which is a bright green and it's kind of matrix like format. Um, if I turn that off, then um, I kind of see this differently. So I don't get that glow in there. So we've got this nice level of control over deciding whether we want a glow in there or whether we want something a bit cleaner. And that is where this kind of ambient color comes into play here. So once we turn the glow off, then we can get a bit of an ambient color that's kind of in the middle. Um, if we set that to black, then we don't have the color. So I'm going to flip the glow back on here. So we get that green back there. And you can see we can change the amount of glow that we have um, from zero to 100%. And we can also get it to replace the ambient color. So you can see when we uncheck this, we basically have a kind of block of color in the background rather than a kind of pure glow. So I'm going to come back to a halfway point here. And also I've just noticed that my clip here is letterboxed a little bit. So I'm going to increase the size of it up here just so that we fill that whole screen uh, with the transition. So, so let's have a look at another transition here. Let's just drag another clip down onto our timeline and we'll shorten this up. And I'm going to scroll up here and we're going to grab the, the DNA transition. So this is quite a nice one. So we'll stretch this out so we can kind of 
see it a little more slowly. And basically, if we play it through, you can see we get this nice kind of rotation of these columns. So if I come back here to the middle, again, you can see I've got seven columns here, but I can drop this down. So if I just wanted three columns, then I've got this, just this nice level of control over exactly how many rows and columns I have in those transitions, which just gives you that nice level of control over the way you want your transition to play back. So we'll play that one through. You can see I've modified the number of rows and columns to get that effect. So again, another favorite of mine is something like this highly toxic one where we get these nice rotating squares. And what I did there was I just dragged my transition um, onto the existing transition and it will replace it uh, in the same time frame. So you can replace transitions like this. We can also, with the block party transition selected, um, click on the presets here as well and modify which transition is being used. So we can quickly come in um, and change uh, what we want um, our transition to be. We also have some options here that we can change as well. So we can change this to next face, to back face, and we can also make some basic changes um, in here as well. So we might want the glow turned off, or we might want light rays turned on we can make those changes in our viewer here as well with this kind of overlay so let's drag on the, the kind of basic block party transition and you can see here with this transition we've just got the basic spinning of the squares or cubes and it's really from here that you can build all these different uh, kind of options as well so we can change the number of columns and quickly you can see we're starting to get that twist in there. Uh, we can change the angle at which things kind of modified. Um, we can also change the spread of them as well here too. Uh, and then also how in sync uh, these are as well. So you can see quite quickly just by changing a few of these settings, we get a real different effect on our transition. So for the rotation as well. Uh, you can see we're rotating on the y-axis at the moment. We can change that to x-axis. Which will change again the way the, the transition kind of falls. Uh, and we can change the number of rotations as well. I'm going to change this back to y-axis. And then we've got some fun things like the wobble as well, which will allow us to kind of change the way that that transition falls. And these are keyframeable things as well. So we can add in keyframes if we need to kind of mark off uh, specific areas. Okay, so you can see you can create some very interesting uh, transitions and you just have that nice level of control. So the last thing we'll have a look at, I'm just gonna go back to my previous clip, is how to make this transition from one clip to a split screen. And this is using the block party transition, but basically also working with Final Cut Pro's tools as well. So I'm gonna move ahead in time here and I'm gonna grab these three unchanged clips. We'll copy these and paste these to our new timeline. So I'm gonna grab this ocean clip. This is gonna be the clip we're gonna transition from. And then We'll just stretch out our timeline here so we can see all three of these. Basically, what I want to do is I want to make a split screen here from these three clips. And I'm going to do that manually using the crop. But before I kind of set out on making my split screen, I'm going to add some guides in here. So I'm going to jump into my generators here. And we're going to jump into the Ripple Tools Complete um, generators. And I'm going to bring down my guides as a layer here. So all these uh, clips that we have here are either HD or um, 4K. And so basically I want to, with these guides, create a guide which is exactly two thirds of the way across. So I can line up my crop to that. And then which is exactly one third of the way across here. So I'm going to line up my guide here for the Ripple Tools Complete uh, guides here. And this Vertical guide runs from 0 to 1. I'm going to type in 0 0.66, so 66% uh, percent across. And basically, I'm going to crop this top layer um, across from the left um, to that guide. So I'm going to 
crop across. And what you'll notice um, is that my slider stops before I can get to the crop point that I want. So I'm going to hover over the numbers here and just drag this a bit further. And it's kind of getting hard to drop that crop point in exactly the right spot there. So I'm going to zoom to 100% so I can see it. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key just as I move this, which is going to allow me to basically change that um, in a bit more of a refined way. So you can see now I've cropped to that line. I'm going to grab the guide again and I'm going to put this at 0.33. So basically a third of the way across. So my guide is here now. And now I'm going to grab this second layer and crop from the left all the way across until I hit that guide. And then I'll use the Alt key to just crop that in a more refined way. So now if I go back to fit, I've got my split screen there. I'm going to delete this topmost layer. So once I've deleted that, um, what I want to do is actually select all of these and turn these into a compound clip because to add a transition from this clip to these three clips, I basically need to wrap these all up into one clip and then trim them down a little bit so I've got that overlap. So I'm going to right click here with all those clips selected, go to new compound clip. I'll call this uh, split screen. And so now I've got my split screen there. I can double click in here and kind of modify those settings in that compound clip. But I can also now trim this down from either end, trim down my clip here, my ocean clip. And I'm gonna grab from my block party transitions the three-way split, which is down towards the, the bottom here. So this clip here. So if I drag this onto my edit point, I'm going to stretch this out so it plays back a little bit longer. And so you can see now when we play that back, we have the nice flipping of the single image into that split screen, which works really well. So in here as well, if we kind of come onto our transition for things like the effects here, we can obviously change the, the glow to light rays or we can change it to none. We can also modify the amount of effect that there is. So we can change that and also change the color uh, down here as well. So we've got this real nice level of control over the color and the kind of glow and light rays when we're setting up these blocks. So I hope that's a good overview of the block party transition, how to work with it. I think it's really great in terms of the amount of control you've got, say for instance, compared to something like the basic dissolve transitions. Um, there are some other divide transitions in Final Cut Pro 10, but the block party transition really offers a, a kind of incredible, not only level of control, but speed of render and kind of management of different colors and stuff like that uh, when you're working um, on specific projects in Final Cut Pro 10. So I hope that's been a useful overview of the block party transition. If you have any questions about it or like to leave some comments, then please do uh, leave them below. Um, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.